Heartless, Forbidden Book One, written by Susanna Thompson, narrated by Colina Schubert. Chapter 26 I felt exuberantly happy when I went to catch up with my mom. She opened her bedroom door when I knocked on it, and she gave me another hug. I missed you so much, she said. Hopefully not too much, I replied. You were supposed to be having a wonderful time. I did, she acknowledged, but I felt bad to leave you behind again. It was your honeymoon, I said. It's supposed to be just the two of you. I'm sure not taking you on my honeymoon. She laughed. Did you get engaged while we were gone? No, I answered. I only went to wild parties and got arrested. Suddenly worried that Robert would take my words seriously, I peered past her into the room. Uh, where's Robert? He's taking a shower, she replied. Oh, how about we go to my room? I suggested so that I could have my mom all to myself. And to avoid the possibility of seeing Robert walk out of the bathroom in a towel, or even less. Sure, she agreed and closed the door as she stepped out into the hallway with me. So, about these wild parties... There was only one, and it wasn't that wild, I remarked. It was Catherine's idea, and she was here the whole time. Mom waited until we were inside my room with the door closed before she spoke again. How did you like Catherine? Be honest, she urged. It stays between us. I like her, I said sincerely. She's really nice, and she even helped me get ready for the party. I'll show you the pictures she took of me. I pulled up the photos on my phone and handed it to her. Wow, she exclaimed. You look so sexy. She glanced warily at me before looking down at the phone again. How many guys were at this party? Catherine was here, I reiterated. But someone did ask me out on a date, I admitted, recalling Cade teasing me about forgetting that. Oh, did you say yes? Mom asked. Yeah, I answered, but I don't know now. Why? She questioned in surprise. Did you feel pressured to say yes? Who is this boy? His name is Brandon, I told her. He's one of the neighbors Cade invited, and I didn't feel pressured. It was just a spur-of-the-moment thing, but I'm not really sure now if I want to go. Why not? She queried. Where is he taking you? To dinner, I replied. It's just, I'm not sure if I like him enough to date him. He seems like a nice guy, but I don't know. You won't know unless you give him a chance, she said. I know your last boyfriend broke your heart, but you shouldn't give up on love. It's not that, I said. I'm over that, but I'm just not sure if I want to go out with Brandon. Are you interested in someone else, she asked. Is that what's stopping you? My mind flitted back to the way Kate had looked at me with so much emotion in his eyes, and the memory filled me with the same surge of warmth I had felt in his presence. Who is making you smile like that? Mom inquired curiously. Was he at the party too? I hadn't been aware that I was smiling. There were lots of cute guys at the party, I said to distract her from studying my facial expressions. This one guy looks like a movie star, and his last name is Cade. How weird is that? What are the chances that Cade's neighbor would have that last name? Mom was still fixed on her inquiry. Is he the guy you like? I never said there was a guy, I retorted. You're just assuming there's a guy, but there isn't. Mm-hmm, she agreed noncommittally. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell him either. But you can invite him over again with a few of the other neighborhood kids. It doesn't have to be a party. You can invite them over for dinner. There is no guy, I insisted. He'll probably be over anyway if he's friends with Kate, she continued. You can even transfer to his school. There was really no reason to drive all that way now that we live here. Robert and I were talking about that on the plane. It's not that far into the school year and we think that you should... No, I exclaimed. I'm not changing schools. Cade goes there too and nobody is saying anything about how far he drives. Robert told me that Kate is a star athlete at that school, and he doesn't want to let down the team. You've got nothing holding you there. You should take advantage of this opportunity to get a quality education, she urged. It will help you get into the college of your choice. I haven't even picked a college, I argued. Going to a private school isn't the only way to get into college. Lots of people from public schools get into the college they want. They do, she acknowledged. 
but why pass up the opportunity to go to a better school? I know it's not easy being the new kid at school, but you did just fine the last time we moved. I'm not worried about that, I said. Then what is it, she pressed. What's holding you back? Nothing, I answered. I don't feel like I'm being held back. I feel like I'm fine where I am. Why is it suddenly so important for me to go to private school? We just want the best for you, she said. Why are you refusing to even consider it? I don't need a private school, I replied. I'm not going to be living this kind of life. What kind of life? She asked quizzically. The rich kind of life. I'm going to be just a regular person when I move out of here, I explained. People won't care where I went to high school because none of them will be rich either. It's not about impressing people. Getting a quality education in high school lays the foundation for success in college. Their curriculum is specifically geared toward... Are you quoting directly from their website? I interjected. I just see opportunities for you that I never had, she told me. I can't help wanting all that for you. Her earnestness mellowed my attitude. I appreciate that, Mom, but this is my life. I can decide which school I want to go to. Okay, she relented. I just want you to promise me that you'll at least consider it. I mean, really consider it before you refuse without even thinking about it. I had to respond with an immediate no. Okay, I promise to think about it. That seemed to satisfy her. Good. She plopped down on my bed and grinned at me. I'll be going to school too. I'm enrolling in college. I gaped at her and she laughed at my expression. What? You don't think I can hack it in college? What made you decide to do that? I asked. I mean, I know you can do it, but why? It doesn't make any sense for me to continue working as a waitress, she replied. I only did that out of necessity, and it's no longer necessary. I can't be a homemaker either, since Robert already has a cook and maids to do that. I've always wanted to be a teacher, so I'm going to get my degree now that I have that chance. That's great, Mom, I told her sincerely. I was wondering what you were going to do all day, I admitted. It had never occurred to me that my mom might have dreams for herself. I'd never known that she wanted to become a teacher. My rumination on her past had always involved imagining her life with my dad. I knew about his dream to open his own car repair shop, but not about hers. I had been too fixated on learning everything I could about my dad to be interested in discovering more about my mom. I saw her every day and assumed that I knew everything about her. My thoughts segued into recalling Cade's assumptions about her. I couldn't wait to tell him that she was going to college to get her teaching degree. She was already proving him wrong. When there was a knock on the door, I assumed it was Robert coming to find Mom. I hadn't expected to open the door and see Cade standing there. I knocked this time, he told me. His gaze brought just as much of a flush to my cheek as the memory of the incident he was referring to. I thought back on it now in a different context than when it happened. Filtered through my new perception of him, the memory was sexy rather than embarrassing. Mom's going to college, I blurted in my flustered state. It seemed to take him a moment to comprehend what I had said. Uh, college? He questioned, still appearing to be distracted. Yeah, I said. She's going to be a teacher. I've got a long way to go, I heard Mom say as she came up beside me. It's been a long time since I've been at school. I'll have to take placement tests for math and English. Shall we go downstairs? She inquired as she continued speaking. See, I still remember what I learned in English class. Shall is more of a polite suggestion, and should is an actual question. Kate had recovered his ability to engage in conversation. So you're politely suggesting that we go downstairs, he stated more than questioned. We haven't seen you and Lexi since the wedding, she replied. This will be our first evening together as a family, and we'd like to spend it catching up and talking. Lauren will be back to cook dinner for us tomorrow. I thought tonight we could just order pizza. We had pizza for lunch, I told her apologetically. It was my idea to order pizza and watch a movie. Well, we can order some other kind of takeout, she said. Shall we order Chinese, Kate queried. Mom smirked at him. Are you politely suggesting that we order Chinese? He gave her a little smirk in return, but changed his expression when he looked at me. Do you like Chinese food? he asked. I love Chinese food, I answered. He smiled warmly. Then that's what we'll get. Cade, 
Mom began in a more serious tone. I want you to know that it'll be your turn to get something you want when we go on vacation. I did get what I want, he insisted. Lexi saw my collection of maps, so she knows it's the truth. Okay, she agreed dubiously. But if you see something else you want, you can have it. A smile played over his lips. Thanks. Our family evening was pleasant and polite, but it wasn't as relaxed as the atmosphere had been earlier in the day during our enjoyment of the pizza and movie combination. It was lacking the cathartic comfort level we'd had then. I wasn't feeling tension so much as heightened awareness that kept me from relaxing. There was anticipation, too, for the next time Kate and I would be alone. That time arrived when our jet-lagged parents went to bed. Kate and I were clearing the empty food containers from the coffee table. We took them to the kitchen to throw them in the trash. After that was done, we stood there, looking at each other. The anticipation built in intensity with every second that passed. I already knew how good it felt to kiss him, and I felt the thrill of that expectation as he moved closer to me. The sweet tenderness of our earlier kiss was repeated when our lips touched, but that slowly gave way to deepening passion that took us to the hungry edge of desire. My hands slipped down from grasping Cade's hair to sliding up under his t-shirt and running up the skin of his back. He made a sexy sound in his throat and dropped his hands down to grip my hips and press my body tightly against him. I made my own sound of pleasure and kissed him feverishly. His hand squeezed me in response and I pressed myself even more firmly against him. My whole body was alive with the feel of him. All my nerve endings were attuned to his touch and I was quickly reaching the point of wanting him beyond reason. I wrenched myself away from him with a suddenness that took him by surprise. Slow down, I said in a breathless voice. He backed up and leaned against the counter also breathing like he was winded. Eventually, a slow smile made its way onto his face. What are we going to do now? Go to bed, I answered. His smile widened into a wicked grin. Yeah? Our own beds, I amended with a responding smile. To sleep. Are you going to dream about me? He asked in a playful tone. That would be a nightmare, I teased. All my dreams about you are good he told me seductively. Very good. You're bad, I retorted, feeling both embarrassed and excited about the kind of dreams he might be having about me. Are you going to spank me? He asked and laughed when my face flamed in embarrassment. Good night, I said and turned to escape to my room. Lexi, he called after me. Are you going to cancel your date with Brandon? I halted and turned to look at him. Of course, I can't go out with him now that... As I trailed off, I wondered about how to finish that sentence. Now that what? Now that Kate and I had kissed? But we had already kissed before I agreed to the date with Brandon. What exactly had changed between us now? I had hated him before, and now I didn't. Not only did I not hate him, but I had no longer disliked him at all. Now that you like me, Kate teased. The words unnerved me. But he spoke again in a more serious tone. I like you too, Lexi. A lot. The admission seemed to disquiet him as well, and he was suddenly eager to leave the room. Good night, he said as he strode past me. I stood there for another minute as the realization sank in that I liked Cade, and that he possibly liked me back. It gave me such a nervous but excited feeling that kept me awake long into the night. I could hardly wait to see him again in the morning.